Here's another sample problem that comes from uh, a Catherine Kozak video. So we're looking at measuring white blood counts uh, per million of whole blood, per milliliter of whole blood. And we're going to assume that the random variable has a distribution that is approximately normal with a mean of 7,500 7, and a standard deviation of 1,750. So then a test, if, if, if somebody tests this blood and the result of the white blood count per cubic milliliter is less than 3,500, it's an indication that there's a disease involved. And this indicates that possibly the bone marrow depression that may be a result of viral infection. So it's kind of an important test. So this looks more like a written homework assignment kind of thing. And of course, in this situation, we'll want to state what the random variable is, and then we'll want to calculate some probabilities. And they're asking for two specific probabilities here. So as in any written report, we make a copy of the problem, and then we provide the answers. So first of all, we state the so first of all, we state the random variable. The, the random variable is what you're actually measuring. In this case, we're measuring the white blood cell count in whole blood. So our next question is, what is the probability that on a single test, the percent is less than 3,500? So let's draw a picture. Now you could draw this picture by hand, but I'm going to show you the R code that will draw the normal probability distribution and the area that we're looking for. Usually when I'm working on one of these problems, I simply draw this normal distribution by hand. But let me explain to you what I'm doing here to get R to do that. We needed to know what the mean was. Notice that the mean is at 7,500. That's where the high point is. Uh, the standard deviation is 1750, so 7,500 added to 1,750 would be right here where the inflection point uh, is on the curve. Uh, because I know that 99.7% of a normal distribution is within one standard, is within three standard deviations of the mean, I'd like to find the lower bound for my graph three standard deviations below the mean, and the upper bound, three standard deviations above the mean. Then I'm going to create uh, a bunch of different points from that lower bound to the upper bound uh, at increments of, uh, of 1 one hundredth, and then plot that graph, the x's and the y's, and the plot is going to be a linear type. So it plots a point for each one of those x, y values and then connects the, the uh, points from point to point. And uh, then I, I put this line in, which is just really the x-axis uh, down here. Now we want to find the probability that if we pick something at random from this distribution, that it ends up being less than 3,500 or less. So let me color in that area. Now I've added some more code to shade in this area that's below 3500. Just out of curiosity, let me explain uh, what we did there. We made a, an upper bound for the shaded region. That's going to be 3500. The lower bound for the shaded region is still going to be the lower bound for whatever we set for the entire graph. Then we picked a, a sequence of points from that lower bound to the upper bound of the shaded at increments of uh, 1 one hundredth. Uh, then we calculated the density of the, f of the normal distribution for each one of those x's in a normal distribution with the mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. Then we plotted with lines, not with plot, see, because we want these plots to end up on top of this other plot that's already been done. So we we use lines, which is like plot, but it uh, puts it on top of whatever's currently there. From uh, x1 to, to the plotting the points, x1, y1, and now we're doing a 
type of histogram. So for each one of those points, it draws a vertical line. And we decided to make the color red. Okay, usually I draw this out just by hand to have an idea of what I'm looking for. Notice that we could tell when we sketch this out over here at 3500, this is going to be a relatively small probability. Now the p-norm function is made to calculate this probability. So it's just going to be the p-norm of 3500 in a normal distribution that has a mean of mu. Remember we've already defined what mu is. It was the 7500 and a standard deviation of, we called it sig, for the standard deviation of that uh, population. And so it's, it's fairly small. It's about one chance in a, in a hundred. Uh, that's not that's small enough to be unusual because you our our standard rule for being unusual is to be less than five percent and this is less than five percent. Now there was a lot of extra in this script because we, <clears throat> we were interested in in having the script also draw the picture. Usually you don't need to do that. But uh, let's look at an alternative way of doing this calculation. Now, don't let all the discussion and the script that we use to draw the graph confuse you here. Really, to calculate this, uh, this probability, it was just a matter of looking at p-norm of 3,500 in a normal distribution that had a mean of 7,500 and a standard deviation of of uh, 1,750. Generally to solve this problem you just identify that you've got a random variable x that is normally distributed so its distribution looks something like this and they told us what the mean was so right here at this high point the mean is is uh, 7,500 and the standard deviation is 17,500 and we're interested in the area less than 3,500. So we just need to find this area to the left of that 3,500. And that's just easily calculated as the p-norm of 3,500 in a normal distribution with the mean of 750 and a, and a standard deviation of 1750. Okay, so often just hand drawing the, the graph kind of helps you see where things need to be and it's just a standard use of a p-norm distribution. But now there's another way to, to look at this, and that is to convert things to a standard normal distribution. So if we looked at the z-value of everything up here, then the mean, the z-value of the mean, is going to be zero. And in a, nor in a standard normal distribution, the distribution is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So what we need to do is find out what happens to this 3,500, or in other word, what is the z-score of that 3,500? Calculate the z-score of 3,500, we simply take 3,500 minus the mean, So the, the z-score is just counting how many standard deviations we are away from the mean. And so that, z, that number is going to be this z-score. And we want to find the area below that, but now we're in a standard normal distribution. So the alternative way of finding this is with a, is, well, let me give you the script. So the alternative solution is to change this 3,500 to its z-score and then take the normal distribution of that. So we find the z-score, 3,500 minus 7,500 divided by 1,750, and then find the p-norm of that. And notice that these two methods of calculating, either calculating it from this distrib normal distribution or from the standard normal distribution, of course, both give you the same result. Now for the final question. Suppose a doctor uses the average of two tests that are taken a week apart. What can we say about the probability that the distribution of the sample? Well, <clears throat> uh, 
so let's let's look at that situation. So our original uh, distribution had a mean of 7,500 and a standard deviation of 1,750. Now what we're going to do is take a sample from there. In our case, it's a very small sample. We're taking a sample of two. And then we're going to take the average of that sample. Now what we're thinking about here is looking at every possible sample that could have been taken of, of size two and all of the averages that we would get there. And so over here we want to look at the distribution of those sample means. Now the central limit theorem says because this was a normal distribution that the distribution of the sample means will be normally distributed and the mean of the sample means the mean of the sample means will be equal to the mean of the original population. So the mean of this distribution will be 7500. Furthermore, the central limit theorem assures us that the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means will be the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n. Now what we're interested in knowing is, is what's the probability of this average being less than 3500. So clearly 3500 is over here somewhere. So we're interested in finding the area to the left of that 3500, that little red area. Well, once again, a p norm will do the job for us. But uh, what we need to do is recognize that this standard deviation is different. So let me write a script that will handle that calculation. Okay, so here's the script. Because I'm going to need to use this mean more than once, I'm going to name it so that I can use it in a couple different calculations. This standard deviation of the sample means is sometimes called the standard error. So I'm going to call that SE, and it's going to be mu divided by the square root of n. That comes from the central limit theorem. That's what that standard deviation is going to be. So what I need to do to find this red area is find the p-norm of 3,500 in a normal distribution with a mean of mu, 7,500, and this standard error. And that's going to be about 22. 22-23%. Now as an alternative we could convert these the information here to, to z-scores and use the standard normal distribution. If this graph is converted to z-scores then of course the mean is zero we need to find out what the z-score of 3,500 is. So that the, the z-score is 3,500 minus the mean of the distribution that we're in, which will be the 7,500, divided by this standard deviation, which is our standard error. So let's build the, uh, the script that would do that. Let's assume that we've already built this mu and this standard error. So here we are calculating that z value. Notice it's 3500 minus the mu and all of that divided by the standard error, which we've already calculated. That's mu divided by the square root of n. And then we just have to find the, the p norm of z. And you'll notice that those two values uh, produce the same result. So there's the one and there's the other. And both methods produce the same result. Okay, hope that helps.